So what I'm going to be talking about is um, the initially we're going to look at smoking within the drug and alcohol and mental health population and a quick look at the, the general concept of tobacco heart, harm reduction and then I want to talk a bit about vaping. So looking at some of the evidence on does it work, uh, what are the harms, what are the legal issues, um, how do you counsel smokers if you decide to use these products and some practical information about what they are and where to buy them. But first, I just wanted a show of hands on, have you ever discussed vaping with patients? Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Okay, and, and how many of you have actually recommended vaping to patients? Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, good. Well, obviously a very enlightened group. So these are the sort of patients I, I, I think we're going to be talking about. These are patients that you probably recognise for whom tobacco harm reduction may have a role. I mean, this gentleman is, has schizophrenia. He's a very heavy smoker, probably very addicted, and he finds smoking actually really helps him. He uses it for boredom, he uses it to relax. It's his best friend. One of my patients described his cigarettes as his pocket psychiatrist. So it's always there to support him when he needs it and uh, gets a lot of positive benefit out of it. And you know, I'm sure you've had experience trying to stop these patients or help them stop smoking. <clears throat> then there's Ron, who is a salesman uh, with alcohol dependence. So he drinks about 15 drinks a day with his mates. Um, he's got depression, which is going to make it a little bit harder. He smokes 20 a day. And you know, we all know he's, it's going to be very hard for him. When he's out drinking with his friends and they're all smoking, it's particularly hard for him to not smoke in those situations. And finally, there's Emily, um, who has a problem, has had a problem with heroin. She's now on methadone. Um, she, she enjoys the whole ritual of smoking. She loves that throat hit as the nicotine hits the back of the throat, that feeling of suffocation as the smoke goes down the airways. Apparently it's enjoyable to a lot of people. She loves the visual cloud, the whole ritual of smoking. And she's really going to miss that. She can get over the nicotine, but she's going to miss the ritual. These are patients who may benefit from uh, tobacco harm reduction with electronic cigarettes. The sort of patients we're talking about with addiction problems and mental health issues are generally more heavily addicted, they smoke more heavily, and they have low to very low quit rates. However, what's most important is that they're more likely to die from their smoking than from their drug and alcohol or their mental health problem. So we tend to overlook it, but we forget how important it really is. And we know that if they quit smoking, it not only improves their chance of dealing with their substance use disorder, but it also improves their mental health. So really, it should be an integral part of treatment of addiction and mental health problems, because it actually helps both of those problems. It's not just a, an additional issue that somebody else can deal with. I think it's something that people in this room should be talking about as part of the treatment for these people. Um, this is what's going to kill them and will actually help the problem that, that you're treating. The other very important issue is for this population, which are, who are often on fixed incomes uh, and spending a lot of money on, on, on the wrong things, uh, smoking is a major cause of financial stress. And they often go without other things to pay for their cigarettes. S the cost of smoking in Australia has tripled in the last 10 years. It's inexorably rising to raise money for government coffers very little of it is going back to help smokers to quit. And if you're a 20 a day Marlboro smoker, you're, you can see you're, near, you're using 80% like of your new start allowance. I don't know how these people do it, but it's a huge financial imposition. We have the highest cigarette prices in the world. How do they do it? And they're under enormous financial stress, that there are health inequalities uh, and uh, addressing this will solve a lot of problems. I'm sure you're all familiar with the concept of harm, I know you're all familiar with the concept of harm reduction. With tobacco harm reduction, 
It's all about using a less harmful alternative to smoking. So it's accepting, it's a pragmatic solution which accepts that people die from the tar, not from the nicotine. That's what they're addicted to, or that's part of the addiction. And we know that almost all the harm is from the smoke. It's from what you, the chemicals released by burning tobacco. And if we can really remove all the smoke and give them the nicotine that they're enjoying, then um, we'll solve a lot of problems. So we're not necessarily trying to stop nicotine. Uh, a lot of people are worried about nicotine, and you know we, they want a nicotine-free society, and that's their that's their motivation. We, it's an addictive drug. We can't have people using it. We're always going to have people using drugs. We have to accept that. Let's at least put them on the drug that's relatively harmless. Take away the poisons. And you're familiar with the use of harm reduction in your work. I'm really delighted that the Royal Australian Australian and New Zealand College of Psychiatrists has supported tobacco harm reduction and the Drug and Alcohol Nurses of Australia, Australasia. These are the only two organisations in Australia that support vaping. All the government health departments, all the major cancer charities, the Australian Medical Association, the Royal Australian College of Physicians, the Thoracic Society, anyone you can think of has a problem with tobacco harm reduction. And I hope you'll agree that the Royal Australian College of uh, Psychiatrists are, 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 have broken new ground and will hopefully be um, a big influences in, in moving this debate forwards. So what are e-cigarettes? So basically they consist of three parts, a battery, a heating element or atomizer that heats the liquid and a little chamber of e-liquid which usually contains nicotine. Apparently about 90% of Australians, Ron told me yesterday, Ron Borland, I do who vape do use nicotine. So people breathe in, uh, the heating element heats up, vaporises the nicotine solution which also contains glycerin and, and propylene glycol and flavourings into an aerosol which they inhale, which is absorbed in the mouth and the lungs, and then they blow out the vapour. And why that's, why it's the most popular quit smoking method in Western countries, it's the most popular way to quit in the UK, the US, the EU, is because it provides people with the nicotine that they need, to which they're addicted, but it also replicates the habit. So it replicates the hand-to-mouth ritual, it replicates the sensory experience, the social experience, the psychological experience of smoking. Nothing else does that, and that's why it works, in my opinion. So it's a form of nicotine replacement therapy which also deals with the habit, which you know, a patch does not do. There's been a lot of evidence suggesting that these products are effective, but we haven't had a lot of high quality randomised control trial evidence. Now we do. So there was a big study in the New England Journal of Medicine yesterday, from uh, last week from the UK, of 886 treatment seeking smokers who were randomised to either vaping or NRT. Now the NRT was, the, most of them used combination NRT, so they used it optimally. They had all had some counselling. And they found that after 12 months, people who were randomised to vaping were nearly twice as likely to have quit, uh, biochemically verified. So we know it can work for some people. So no one can say anymore, no, it, we, it doesn't work, there's no good evidence. The early studies which used very uh, inefficient and ob now obsolete devices were about as good as NRT. The more modern devices certainly seem to work. You all know Robert West, he agrees with me. So this was a good study, uh, which showed they work and um, which was a very high quality study. And this supports the other evidence that we've had for some time. We've had a diverse range of evidence from population studies, user surveys, changes in national smoking rates, and a lot of observational studies, and the good quality observational studies have certainly supported electronic cigarettes. So I think, what I'm getting at here is there's a lot of evidence. We now have a whole range of different types of evidence with different limitations and strengths. And when you combine them, 
Uh, I think we now are in a position to say we can have very high confidence that these products work for some people.